I, I hope this boom continues for the for the bike industry because like Ireland badly needs this, you know, badly needs um, cities where people can cycle around, where kids can be allowed to cycle around around alone, etc. You know, it makes such a difference for a city when that can happen. And like, well, in, I mean, in, in Ireland, our um, our cycling infrastructure is fairly woeful, isn't it? I mean, what the, with regard to greenways and with regard to um, you know cycle lanes, all this kind of stuff. I mean, what do you think should should be done? Well, yeah, I, I would be quite critical of our the state of our bike networks. I mean, I've, I'm lucky enough at work; I get to travel a bit to um, you know other countries. And in 2018, I was living in Poland for eight months, working over there in a city called Wrocław. And uh, even though uh, it there's a lot of improvements they would need, but compared to Ireland, that city was light years ahead in terms of bike infrastructure. I see it in the Netherlands. I just think we need a complete change. I mean, there's always people, we will always need cars. That's absolutely a given. That's you know, people will always need them for various reasons. But any city that I know of that has changed uh, the, the main modes of transport in the city themselves, the central areas of cities, from away from cars to walking and cycling, you know, they would never go back. They, they wouldn't. And I know on, obviously we're on the West Coast, there's bad weather and the other things, but we just need a sea change in how we see a city. And for me, the most important thing is that within 10 or 15 minutes of your house in most cities, you should be able to walk or cycle to almost any facility. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's really... And uh, for people with disabilities, and I hope you don't mind me going back there again, it just is so important because, um, you know, they wouldn't have the confidence. There's a person who lives near me who uses an electric wheelchair and that person, the footpaths are too narrow for them. So that person's going up and down the Clybon Road, on the road with cars whizzing by in an electric wheelchair. And yeah. I just think in this day and age, that's just shocking, you know? And, uh, you know, that can't be comfortable for that person to get out and be mobile and active, et cetera. And um, let's hope over the next few years that things change. And I, I think they will. I think they will have to, you know? Yeah. there. I mean, there are there are some moves being made, but um, there's a long way to go, isn't there, to, to go be anywhere like... Some of the some of the cities on the continent. Oh yeah, a, a, a huge, a very long way to go. You know, is is, is um, we really do. But you know, I know Seville, for example, in Spain is one city that has not overnight, but within a co- within a couple of years has transformed the city and uh, uh, from a city that was you know very congested to a city now that has just a huge amount of cycling facilities and it's been a great success. So it can be done. You know, yes, yeah. no question. Well, hopefully the council will start with putting a, a bike lane along the promenade. So easy, like, you know. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, But I think I think it has to happen. It will happen, you know. And I just hope it's sooner rather than later. Yeah, you know, because I'm there's an opportunity, isn't there, for, like, not just for competitive cycling and for mountain biking and gravel bike, but there's, there's an opportunity to use the fact that people have really got into exercise and, you know, cycling and things like this. You know, to, to make something good out of a bad situation, that we bring this momentum along and, and, and it's not lost, and especially for the cycling clubs, you know, that they have the opportunity to, it's a, it's a resource that's already there to, to bring those people along, encourage them cycling. Yeah, yeah. And, and actually, you know, on the cycle um, school buses that have been organised in Galway, the one in Nakbikara, I know that a lot of the members of Galway Bay would have been some of the cyclists um, helping, I suppose, that school bus and uh, organising it, etc. And, I agree with you. I think, like you know, if you were to come out of this lockdown and and the city was to go back to the way it was, and I'm talking about Galway, congested, etc., no real changes in how we move about the city, it would be a shame. And you do see in Dublin, they've made a lot of um, uh, changes to the to Dublin city. So, I mean, it would be a fantastic legacy to to come out of this with real concrete, short term plans that would kind of change the way, you know, we move around the city. Yeah. Absolutely. I want to ask you one thing. I don't know if you want to be asked about this or not, but the uh, the velodrome that's in the national development plan has been put on review. But yet the uh, we have a white water rafting proposal that's still going ahead for uh, for Dublin. What do you think about that? I mean, okay, on the white water rafting thing, I, I don't know enough about it. I think, in fairness to it, you know, there's a lot of disagreement. I think there's an element that you know, part of the reason it's, it's, I suppose, maybe going ahead is because of broader social benefits it might bring to that community. I don't know. On the ben, on the velodrome, I mean, the mind boggles because cycling has been one of the most successful sports uh, in terms of international medals over the last number of years. Not just paracy- paracycling has been phenomenally successful. Mm-hmm. But if you look at the 
uh, the cycling scene as well. If you look at the amount of Irish athletes that have won World Cups, look at Martin Irvine's gold, uh, gold and silver medals, World Championship medals. Um, Ryan Mullen, Sam Bennett, all these people came. Yeah. Sam Bennett has European track medals. I mean, it's just there has been a huge amount of um, people that have come through the, uh, I suppose, the, the track scene. And what Irish athletes are having to do are go abroad to train for the track. And there's no country that competes for medals that I'm aware of. Uh, like if you look at the Danes, the English, New Zealand, Australia, I can list them all and they all train at home in their own velodromes. Yeah, yeah. And and sorry, if I could just say as well, the, the broader benefits that that would bring, you know, just for the public, I mean, the velodrome is a very safe, brilliant way to get kids into cycling as well, which is, it's used in other countries as that. So mm-hmm. for me, it's a project that should go ahead. Yeah, fantastic resource and great spectator sport too. It was like in Rio, our, our velodrome was absolutely jammers for all races. It was fantastic. And and like, if you've ever watched, um, you know, as I said, the scratch races, for example, or the tandems when, when you have the, the tandem riders flying around over a kilometre effort at 80 kilometres an hour, it's a, a sight to behold. So it's uh, really exciting. And one thing I'd love to do is go to a six day event in, over in Belgium. I've never been to one, but it's, it's definitely on my bucket list. <laughs> yeah, they serve beer in them too. Well, that's part of the reason. <laughs> 